So these elections, these Lok Sabha elections, Lok Sabha is the name of the lower house of the Indian parliament, may mark the uh, end of a cycle. Simply because for the first time, Narendra Modi could not get a majority in the lower house of the Indian parliament. Its party, the BJP, dropped from 300 seats to 240 seats, which means that he cannot govern alone in its partners. And a new coalition, therefore, has to be built. Well, it was there before, the National Democratic Alliance was the name of this coalition, but uh, till, till last week, the BJP did not need the support of partners. Now it does. At least four parties will be part of this additional force on which the government will have to rely. So the new government includes members of parliament from these four parties. It will be a new style of governance. Prime Minister Modi, who exerted power in a very solitary manner, will have to share some of the decision-making process with partners who sometimes are very seasoned politicians. The president of the Janata Dal United, Nitish Kumar, chief minister of Bihar today, and uh, Mr. Naidu uh, at the helm of the Telugu Desham party and chief minister of Andhra Pradesh today, will definitely influence the decision-making process. That will be a different kind of governance. In what sense? We can foresee implications in at least three domains. One, federalism. Power was concentrated in such a way it resulted in centralization of power at the expense of federalism, at the expense of the autonomy of the state governments. That should change and India should be back partly to the kind of decentralized governance that we saw before. Secondly, the other power centers, the parliament, the Supreme Court, the judiciary at large, and many kinds of administration, including the election commission, will be in a position to regain some of their autonomy. And if they show spine, that will make a big difference. It's a big if, because there are clearly strong pressure exerted upon bureaucrats especially, but if they want to regain some of their past autonomy, they will. And thirdly, civil society that was already very active, remember the farmers' movement, remember the movement against the reform of the Citizenship Amendment Act, people were in the street, very active, but still, civil society was at the receiving end. We had seen so many NGOs, so many think tanks, so many universities whose autonomy was, was freedom of expression. And I would bring the media in this picture as well, as a part of the civil society. That should also change and we should see a new atmosphere in the first place, and uh, more dissent, more freedom of expression. Now, what next and why in the first place as this turning point? Why were these elections such a milestone? The beginning of the end of a cycle, at least. Maybe not more than that, but Narendra Modi, in spite of being still prime minister, cannot behave the way he has behaved in the past 10 years. Why? Well, primarily because the opposition was united, very united. You know, if you go by the uh, voting pattern, it has not changed. BJP has retained its 37%, the same number of votes it got in, in 2019. But in front of the BJP, there was a united opposition. And in a, in a system, electoral system that is first past the post system, when the opposition is united, the dominant party cannot win as many seats as it did in the past. So that's one explanation of the change we've seen. 
but it also points towards the future because this opposition will now continue to work unitedly in parliament in the first place during state elections also we'll have very important state elections in Maharashtra, in Mumbai uh, and in Ariana in September and secondly it's not only in terms of number of votes number of seats it's also in terms of the narrative what is the agenda and the opposition has started to shift the agenda we were looking at watching a political scene dominated by identity politics for 10 years. Hindutva, Hindu nationalism set the terms of the debate. And during this election campaign, it did it even more than in 2019 or in 2014. Narendra Modi's election campaign was all about identity against minorities in favor of Hinduism. But the opposition as introduced new themes or reintroduced themes which were on the back burner for years, socio-economic themes. What about inequalities? What about joblessness? What about uh, the uh, impoverishment of the peasants in particular? Now these issues will be debated more and we will have in Parliament questions such as positive discrimination, based on caste and a caste census has been promised by the opposition, we will see probably the kind of oscillation we are seeing for the last 40 years. For the last 40 years, Indian politics oscillates between Hindutva and caste politics. Well, this election may well mark a kind of return to the caste repertoire, to the socio-economic repertoire caste and class largely coincide. So when you say caste, you say class to, to some extent. And therefore, we will be back, most probably, to uh, issues which have been neglected by the BJP and the new prime minister, or the prime minister in a new situation, that is Mr. Modi, will have to factor in this variable, most probably. Science.